Did you say took a DeVry? Yeah. <laughs> it's a class here. Hold on for a second. Wait. I better be on camera. Where am I? Welcome. Here we go. And I'm not Tony Hall. Anyway, got the cookies, got the apples. You ready? Do you, you want, want a cookie? No, I'm just looking. I just know that's my prize at the end. I feel like anyone saying you want a cookie is always a sarcastic comment. I, I meant, meant it. You want a cookie? Yeah. I meant it. <laughs> yeah, Man. Could, he'd give me one. Uh, you look like more of a cookie guy than a banana guy. <laughs> it's nice. That means I'm straight. <laughs> <laughs> David Spade, welcome yeah. to our podcast. Yeah. Let's see what's different. This is Hawk versus Wolf. What's different between this and you and Dana Carvey? Mm -hmm. Not much. Not too much. No, we only cover SNL alumni. And, I'll no, talk the whole time either way. <laughs> whether, <laughs> that works for Whether me. you're the guest or not. Yeah, that's what happens. I get a little caught up. It was funny uh, having Dana get skate terminology wrong, but just own it. Where yeah, he wasn't, he, he wasn't embarrassed at all. I said, I will probably talk more with Tony because... At least I know a little about skating. And he goes, yeah. And then he was so curious about skating, he talked more. He wanted to know more. He did. And you're patient with people because, you know, everyone wants to know about skateboarding. Those are my <laughs> favorite people to talk about skateboarding where I don't care if you don't know. If you're genuinely interested, mm -hmm. then I would love to answer all your questions. It's a very fascinating sport that people know about football. You know how the mechanics of a lot of things. In skateboarding, you just... And I know about it, and I still am getting lost at the tricks they're doing because I don't. I I know a little about how your body works and where you put your weight and the gravity, and I go, I don't know how they're doing these. It just looks like it's stuck to their feet, you do like it. Dana said. Yeah, I'm terrible. <laughs> Are it you seems like every yeah. time I go, I get hurt. Right now. Are you uh, decent? Should I ask Tony? Yes. Yeah, He's I was a, top ten yes. in the world for a long time. Oh, you were vert yeah. skater. Yeah. Didn't see that coming? Oh, yes. I did not see that coming. Big I was time. thinking top one thousand. He's 000. legit. That's why I'm sitting here. David. Oh, it is because you're. Oh, it's. I thought you had some other expertise. Not none, really. That's it? Yep. Tattoos. This is he, he dabbles in other things. Yeah. Yes. But I did a radio show. He did a radio show and was like, "You'd be a good co-host. You'd be good at talking." And then I was like, "Okay." And then uh, I ended up getting a job at Sirius and was like the second biggest show on Sirius. Yeah. That was huge. I feel like that's where I may have, may have done that with you guys. Were you yes, really, you serious. did. Okay. Yeah, but, I'm always trying to. I have new information though. I I'm always trying to pull favors from you that's for good. whatever I'm doing. You did my show. So. Yeah. See yeah. that? It was fun, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I like you, Heather. Check the diary. <laughs> check my diary <laughs> to see if you had fun. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I want to verify that. <laughs> I don't want you to read it. <laughs> I'll just read you a few excerpts. It's a 50 50. So I if, remember, I may, if I may speak on your behalf yeah. as a skater, David, uh, I don't want to speak I saw in him in Police tense. Academy. He ripped. He was, but he looked but, like you a little bit. But he did. Uh, <laughs> Get back to that. He got hurt doing an air to axle. Yeah. Air to axles. On a uh, mini ramp? No. <laughs> no, in a pool. Yeah. Well, yeah, oh, legit. yeah. I knew you'd be impressed now with I that. Now I shocked you. Yes, you did. Air to axle. It was called an Andrike's aerial axle stall. David Andrike, was he from Wait, Australia? Wait, Dave Andrike? No. San Diego. You, yeah. San Diego. yeah, that area. Yeah. yeah. That whole area. I love Dave Andrike. Australia, San Diego. He had, a, he had an office. Andri Dave Andrike was the hometown hero of San Diego. That's why I knew. I can't even remember how to say his name exactly. It was Andrike, but he was in like, it was at High Roller Skate Park. Yeah. And it's in Arizona. Before your time. Yeah. Oh, you no, didn't know about High Roller? Nah. High nah. Roller had, it was pretty pretty good skate park. And it had a sweet sort of snake run that went into a half pipe that went into a full pipe that went into a 10 feet of flats. So it went half pipe and then 10 feet, 10 of, feet vert. of vert. Yeah. That, and, and I think that Doug Blackheart, there were some legendary. guys that yes. were really good that could get up there and do that grinder or a wheel. I've seen, I've seen a photo of a tail tap up there that looks pretty Jesus, scary. it was terrifying. Yeah. Anything past vert, I start to get a little shaky because, you know, you're in a pipe and it's now you're over weightlessness and, uh, you're sort of pushing your board to stay on. Yes. Right? I mean, sort of. If Especially your front side, you're like, and I, you you feel weightless, and then um, it almost catches back when you're coming down. So when you're getting way up there, so compressed, it's just hard. You're putting stickers up there. Remember that trick? Yeah. See as high as you can go. Yeah. What'd you call it? <laughs> 
That was a, an event. It was called pipe pasting. Pipe pasting, yeah. That's old guy stuff, like, for sure. The, in, in my, so in the amateur series that we used to skate, a in lot of parks, time. a lot of parks had full pipes. Upland, uh, Pomona, Big O. And you would go up with, you'd have a specific color tape that you wrap around your fingers. Oh, that's hot. It's like a vertical jump. So you go. So then you go up and you try to put your arm up as far as you can. Sure. And then they measure, like if you made it. They give you your color, and they see, and then they put lines across the entire full pipe to see who was higher. How cool! With your name, I have yeah. to go back to skateboarding. You did an air to <laughs> yes. Well, it's fair. Oh, so that yeah. means before you slammed on that, you could do like you could grind it. A grinder, yeah. I could do a pool and do a frontside grind, yeah. And That's, I could do a backside with my Bennett Pros and my Powerflex Fives. I think I had Alva conicals, so the edges of the wheels were sort of. You know, beveled in a little bit so yeah. it wouldn't catch. Kind yeah, so you could do that. I don't know if it was cheating. And maybe I had laser trucks. Do we remember lasers? Yep. You guys are so old. You're not, how old are you? I thought you were 51. 20 years older than me. No. 20 older, wait. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you slept on your face. Oh, no, man. no, you look good. Dude. I'm insecure, dude. No, you really? look good. I'm just busting your balls. I shouldn't because I don't know you as well, but. Tony obviously is ancient. I like I like when he says he was <laughs> an amateur. Better. I'm I like, accept well, that. He was an amateur when he was three to seven. And then, <laughs> yeah, then yeah. they gave him a million dollars. They're like, I see something in this kid. So so I was doing uh, at that high roller skate park. We had the wedge. We had like local Arizona. We had the best of the best desert pipes. Yep. So we had 22 foot desert pipes that were You've illegal. Seen photos of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've seen photos. It's like I'm the aware. pyramids. I got here when <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I got here when the last of them were getting bulldozed and I was like lucky enough to get a tile and skate the last like little bank that they hadn't oh. torn apart that was No, upland. really? Yeah, because I, so I saw videos, Del Mar, I, I was aware of them, but by the time I oh, got those here. places. God, Del Mar had the blue and red tile uh, in the yeah, pool, blue and orange, in the main yeah. pool or something, mm -hmm. blue and orange, yeah. God, that was cool. What was it Oxnard? What was that called? Big O? No, I think Oxnard was Oxnard. Oxnard Skate Park? I never went there. Because from Arizona, all we cared about was LA. So what? How old were you when you started skateboarding? Little, right? A little pipsqueak, yeah. I was probably, you know, ten. Who got you into it? My brother was pretty cool, so I just did anything he did. It was uh, my brother Andy, and he had a freeformer, yellow freeformer. This What's is way this? back. Sorry, it's just an old hard plastic split tail. Okay. No. Did you keep talking about like the equipment that's it, it wasn't it wasn't the highest end, but it wasn't the worst either. Right. And I had rector pads. Yep. That's not going back too far. I like rector. I I know those. You're back. You're back? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I had wrist guards because the wrist was the easiest for me to break. All right. Um Okay, wait, so I, I know I know that you got hurt. You know the story. Doing yeah. the air to axle. Were you wearing wrist guards? No, I did have a maybe one of those. How pro, no, I maybe had a Jay Adams flyaway helmet on. Yeah, oh, yeah. don't hit, don't cringe. No, I, I'm saying going back a ways, but I, I think I wasn't even cool enough for that. I think I had a big old goofy Pal Peralta, the kind you wore. The, I uh, rocked Protec. Look like yeah, Protec. Look like yeah. a uh, so I had a flyaway. Helmet. I had a flyaway because I thought it looked cool. Oh. Um, my first concussion in a flyaway. Right, they don't look my teeth out. I mean, there's a gap and in the back. My dad said you are never wearing a flyaway. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's flyaway fair. just didn't cover enough, right? Yeah, but it looked right. good. Yeah. I might have had that on for too long, actually. Because I kept it for a little bit, you know what I mean? Everyone was like, like everyone's like, you don't wear those anymore. on your head. <laughs> well, and I had hair, so it was, I was doing a Christian Hasoi thing. I can't get jammy in the So corner. I was trying to look like, oh, you know what I mean? They, if the hair's flying Did in the back. Did you have long, cool hair? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the best. That's I know. the best. Unbelievable. <laughs> so no, you still look cool. You're good looking at least. So it, the hair isn't the number one thing. The hair, I needed. I needed to have it long. I had white hair. I was you have amazing cool. hair. It's right now. It's back to uh, okay, but I'm trying to go grow it out and get the Rachel. I will. I will tell you that <laughs> I was trying to grow the Rachel, the Aniston haircut from Friends. You're oh, there. of course. Jesus, there. I don't have to walk you through all these jokes, do I? <laughs> Can someone <laughs> Google and just help? We're not each. I don't think friends. He's, yeah. He didn't oh yeah. Didn't friends make it to wherever you're from? Are you Australian? What the? Where are you from? You guys, sorry. <laughs> Where is, are you I've from? I've been living here for like 30 years. I know. I was here before Friends, man. I thought you were from Perth. No, I'm from Melbourne. Melbourne. Man. I don't even know that. I don't know where to go. If you drop me off there now, I would be completely lost. I've been living here. I got kids that sound American, and one of them drives. Like, seriously, back off, everybody. Oh, my God. I literally thought I'm you American. Got, I thought you got here a week ago. 
Um, <laughs> no, because Wait, the, can I tell you a story about yeah. since we were on the subject of hair? I was trying to grow my hair long. I, you know, I had the bangs, obviously, yeah. and they, but I was trying to go really long. Yeah, and so good. I show up to the first day of shooting Police Academy Four in oh, Toronto, no. and they're holding up a Polaroid of you, and they're looking at me. Yuck! On Polaroid of you, looking at me, and just chop my hair off. Oh, just like made it right mind. there in the street. I'll never forget it. I was like, no, I've, I've been trying to grow. Can't we just put it back? Never mind. That's showbiz. <laughs> what a drag. What a drag. Looking like you. this idiot. You were cool, and they took it away. I will tell you that I know. I thought Alva had cool hair. He had curly hair. I thought um, Jay Adams was one of the coolest, you know. So yep. he had like whitish cool hair. I remember I I had a picture of him doing like some tail block with his hand down on some flats of something. Looking at the camera. Cut out a magazine, yeah, yeah and that was yeah. on my fridge or my room forever. And uh, I remember Christian also getting hair extensions and thinking to myself <laughs> that what? hair extensions yeah. are not cool. He, Dude, he shows up at a contest. This guy was, would know it better. I'm, I'm a fan just watching, but at one point... I saw him in a contest. Then I saw another video of another contest that was not that oh, long after the other one. Bust. And his hair was down to his butt and he had lycra pants on. And I was what like, What happened? Lycra short, short ones too. Was he on rollerblades? No, he, what? <laughs> Something he, changed. But, uh, you know who could get away with it? He did. Christian. It made it look cool. Yeah. Yeah, I never met that dude, but I used to see he was, he was the 10 foot aerial guy, right? Yeah. yeah. Was he the first with a 10 inch wide board? Or was no, that, that would be Dogtown Lonnie Town Toff, days. no? Dogtown. Lonnie Toff was the eight-wheeler, so that thing was super Oh, yeah, wide. yeah, yeah. But I had the, a Lonnie Toff board. The big, the big board, the first big board was the Bigfoot, Dogtown Bigfoot, 12 inches wide. Who would have a 12? I mean, my little puncy feet. I uh, was having trouble with my regular Lonnie Toff, eight and a <laughs> half or nine inches. But when they went to 10, I couldn't turn as well, you know? Oh yeah, I, well, and I waited. I didn't know any better, so I, I wanted the wide board. My dad's like, "That thing is." It just was cool. It was like the new thing. I think yeah. even Alva had a fat so. The older I get, the wider my board. Or maybe gets. a yeah. Z flex. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, you go wider is yeah. it easier because I don't you, want to flip it anymore. It's too risky. I'm are you still old. good? Yeah, I'm still better. Are you more of a street guy? No, I'm a vert dude. Okay, good. I like that. That's cool. I'm like me I skate <laughs> mega ramp. I was the second person to jump the gap, ever. The Grand 13th Canyon? The person big, to the do big, the loop. Mega ramp. You don't know me. Oh, the you, gap on a ramp. You should Google me. I'm pretty sweet. I'm like undefeated in mixed martial arts. Like I'm Heather, not, make a note. Google yeah, this guy later. Right. <laughs> It'll be too <laughs> late, but to I feel like I don't have hair and you don't see me as an equal and it's killing me. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it is? No. I think that's what it is, yes. It's just the hair. I just like you because your show is number two on Sirius. <laughs> right. That perked my ears up. I'm like, oh, well, yeah. showbiz talk. It might have even been number one and nobody would tell me. For a little bit. I'll tell you, this is my big claim to fame. I did this show called Just Shoot Me, and uh, you said you were familiar with the show Friends because you were here from uh, Love Australia. It, yeah. And so it was a tough time to be on a sitcom because it was sort of not a golden age. That's that's being a bit much. But it was a very good time of TV where networks ruled. And so on Tuesdays and Thursdays, NBC had Friends, Frasier, Will and Grace, ER, like all the biggest ones, you know. And so I was on Just Shoot Me, which still did well, but it, you're, Seinfeld, you can't compete, you know? Yeah. So even if we were good, which we were pretty good, but in the ratings, we were probably in the top 10, but we're always behind those guys, you know? But there were still, anyway, so one summer they do reruns and it's still all the same shows, same lineup. And we fucking wormed up to number one accidentally. <laughs> oh, did I clip that out and fucking super glue it on the fridge? I, was I like, know exactly how that feels. That's called, my skateboard. It was unreal. She called Jerry, rub it in. I used to see Jerry on on the lot. He was on my lot. Uh, friends was not. I didn't meet. I, I met the friends sort of one one at a time as it went. I knew Jennifer hair uh, hair before she got friends. I knew when she. I met her. She was dating a friend of mine, and she had just auditioned for Friends. And she was this is like her podcast. She she was uh, in a in a I think a sitcom called Muddling Through. And she what they do is they take you in second position. You might know this when you do another show. So the first one is a pilot, but a lot of pilots don't work. So I remember just seeing her at the condos with her mom, and she was like, I did this one called Muddling Through, but I did another one called Friends that I like better, and I just, you know, I'd be lucky to get either one, but I just, I kind of like the other one better. And then Muddling Through didn't work. She got to go on Friends, and then uh, I don't know what happened after that. But Yeah, she um, could have been somewhere. <laughs> I guess it went on the air. But um, so she did that, and then I saw the other guys down the line. But um, that was the fun part of Just Shoot Me is that I got to be in the mix of all those cool shows when they were in their heyday. Was, who were the who were the comics that you feel like you were aligned with? It was sort of your 
era, your crew? Uh, well, you know, when I started, there was some great guy. When I'm, I was starting in Arizona, there were some good guys there. I was probably third best in Arizona, which isn't saying a lot because no one really broke out of Arizona. You know, it was, as I told Colin Quinn, he's a comic, I go, you know, I started in Arizona when there was no comedy scene. He goes, are you saying there's one now? <laughs> I go, <laughs> I go, yeah. So I'm from Scottsdale. I was a skateboarder. Then I started doing stand-up because everyone went to college and I didn't have the grades. I went to community college, so I went to a comedy club. And then I started going on there. There's a couple, couple people that are good. I watch guys do song parodies and props, just learning about all the different kinds of comedy. I also didn't even know you couldn't do someone else's act. I just, because I watched Delirious and I watched Billy Crystal. Yeah. And I didn't do it, but I went up one night and I go, I, there's a, because it was an amateur night. I go, there's this Billy Crystal bit I memorized. I'm going to try. And they're like, oh, you can't do that. I go, no, no, I'm not doing it like on TV or something. I'm just going to do it here. And they're like, you can't. It sort of threw me. I go, well, I just want to make them laugh. And they go, you got to write your own shit. I go, what the fuck? <laughs> That's too hard. <laughs> yeah. I go, well, I can't do that. So I just thought it was funny, whatever. So got to LA and then, you know, I did run into Sandler after a while. It was mostly Schneider. Judd Apatow was around. The ones you know, Drake Sather was a great comic. He used to have this joke. He's very dry like Dennis Miller. He passed away, unfortunately, but uh, after a while. But he, uh, he had such a good act. He said, uh, I saw this bumper sticker that said, uh, help stop bombing in Iran. He goes, I pulled up and said, hey, I can't stop my girlfriend from fucking all my buddies, all right? <laughs> Think I can uh, fix that before I start ironing out everything in the Middle East? <laughs> that is so, a problem. I don't know how many, we all, if you get, people know a lot of Drake jokes, and he was very funny. And then one time I hired him, and he goes, uh, to be a showrunner on a show I did, and he goes, I'm retiring, I, I give you my whole act. I go, oh, really? I didn't know you could do that. I said, yeah, okay. I, I said, it on TV. He goes, I'm not doing it anymore. And he hadn't done it. He did the HBO Young Comedian special, I think, with me. And, but I said, oh, good. And I tried a few of them, but they, I didn't write them, and I felt weird about it. So, But they were so good uh, back in the day. So anyway, Drake was great. I loved Dennis Miller. He wasn't my contemporary. He was too good. Uh, going into the improv when I was 20 and just looking and just like, trying to stand up. I was very new. I think I got Police Academy. I think I got PA4 when I was 21, maybe. So I'm just barely a stand-up. Didn't get it as much on merit as long blonde hair and shorts and not realizing they don't look like me. So it was more diversity. They were like... You mean you did? You got Police Academy 4 because of that? No, or the, just, the stand-up at the improv. Got, I got in. I didn't make it at the comedy store. Wasn't strong enough. Louis Anderson helped me get on there. I did not make it. I went to the improv and these other comedians helped me. And they thought I was funny, but but trying to do that, and then they said, okay, you can call in for spots, which is $28 a spot twice a week. And still is, I think. So you you don't make much money, but I had to move out from Arizona, and I but to make no money. So here I am scraping. And when I go on, I'm blonde. I talk about my mom dropped me off. I talk about stuff from Arizona. It was just different. Here's the lineup, usually. Leno, Seinfeld, Paul Reiser, Kevin Nealon, Maybe Dana. There's all these great comics. Dennis Miller, Richard Belzer. So Wow. But they were all kind of New York comics, like a look. 35, back east, great act, polish. And so I realized later going, oh, they just like, because I was just different. Like, So I went up there. I was kind of funny. And then there's okay. casting people every night there. You don't even know. It's like unbelievable right. way. If you're an actor, you have to wait for a call. You have to wait for a script. This is you go on. And someone's like, hey, there's a guy directing a, a movie here. You want to say hi to you? Hey, there's a woman. That's... And they go, oh, so I start getting calls, star search, those kind of things. I do my first uh, TV appearance on Arsenio Hall because he was hosting for Joan Rivers. So he hosts for Joan wow. Rivers. I'm fucking terrified. I do it. And, and I, I did good. I did that six minutes good. And Joan Rivers had her own show. So Arsenio was hosting for the week, if you follow that. So I do it. I leave. I go to Utah to play cartoons or some dog shit club. For five, <laughs> 400 for the week. So and you're then, not successful no. as a comedian and you're on TV being a comedian. And I go do that and then I go, oh, I'm starting to gain some ground. Then they call and go, hey, they wondered if you want, do you want to host for Joan Rivers next week? I go, are you out of your fucking mind? I go, I just did my first six minutes where I couldn't even believe I got through it. Yeah. Well, I don't but know. When, when Arsenio hosted, was he established? He was pretty established because he uh, got his own show off of that. Right, Remember, okay. he went and did Arsenio. I knew he got one, but I wondered he at was that just time. A, you know, he's out with Eddie Murphy. He was a comedian. Okay, People knew him. 
And he wanted to be a talk show host. I didn't. Right. And so I said no. And they were like, oh. <laughs> they <laughs> couldn't I, believe I, it. How dare you? So then Fox, the head of Fox, Barry Dealer, called me in to say, we can't believe you said no to that. And I go, I wouldn't be any good. I don't even know what I'm doing. And they go, the fact that you just wouldn't say yes, they go, I like that. Something's going on here. They go, <laughs> you should be our Michael J. Fox. Wow. And so they go, I go, okay. I'm not ready for that either, but I said okay to that. And so we we started having meetings, trying to plan shows. And then uh, when I did Police Academy, there was a director up there with Bobcat, and he goes, you should do a show. And I got this heat that no one knows what that means, but you guys do. I got heat because I didn't do that, and then I got a movie. And so by the time I got back, it was like a frenzy to see what they could get me to do because they're like, this guy says no to everything. I go, one thing. Yeah. And I but said I'll yes to Police Academy. Academy. What? And so I come back, and this director goes, we'll have you audition for this thing. And then the heat was getting too bad. He goes, you want to audition for me? Right here, just read it. And I go, sure. I just read it off the paper. I didn't know what I was doing. And he goes, close enough. We can work with you. Because I obviously was bad. I didn't know how to audition. I didn't know anything. So I get back and they offer it to me and my new agents say, don't do it. I go, my own show on Fox. And they go, no. And I was like, this sounds so wrong. Why, why wouldn't I? And they go, NBC is the biggest network. You got to go there. So I go, uh, against all my gut feeling, I, <laughs> yeah. said, I said no. And I started bombing every motherfucking audition. And I lost all my heat. And I went in a hole for two years. I couldn't. Get anything. What do you mean? You, you wow. were bombing them. Police Academy wasn't quite the avatar we thought it would be. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone had pushed all their chips wait, in on that. Wait, so it became like a cult thing because it's it's huge. It's a it's a defining mo- Everyone knows that. Oh, movie. Police Academy? Yeah, but nobody Or Avatar. No, not Avatar. <laughs> you can't say it, but you can't say that there Police were a Academy lot of a well, lot of breakout stars. It was exciting. Academy right, but franchise. we all know it. We all know though. it, Well, yes. we knew that there's a Police Academy series that was pretty well-known back then, comedy. They were starting to fade out by four. Our skateboarding thing was the funnest thing about that one because yep. in our world, everyone knew about it, like all, yeah. all us and you. And so I got a lot of people knew me from that. But I wasn't like busting a gut in that. I was doing like okay jokes and just, you know, whatever. But it helped. All helps. Yeah, it was uh, it was funny because we all, all of us, the Bones Brigade, read for the other part. Oh, Brian Backer. Brian yeah. Backer. So we all read for his like for I rats can do that, that handstand stuff. I can skateboard. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that was a pretty. I think you already had the part. You already had your part okay. and your lines. So we're all reading for that, and then they basically said, "Well, you guys are just going to be his friends," and then they pointed at me and they they said, "Well, you're, and you're going to be his double." Yeah, because we're both goofy footed. Yeah, so that was that was my end. Backer wasn't anything foot. He was um, not very. Um, how do I? Put Didn't this? you say he was resistant? He, he was. He, he, he told yes. him he couldn't skate. I think, yes. in, in fairness, they hire him anyway because he came off fast time. He was not agreeable to try to look like he was skating. Let's put it that way. What? But that's your job. Yeah, that's where it came in with Stacy and you guys, where Stacy Peralta, where second team is the skateboarding unit, and so. I at least can skate, but I know they'd stop and go, okay, we're going to put him on this and pull him and shoot him from the waist up, that yeah. kind of thing. Oh, right? wow. Yeah. It was hard, though, because in those bit, who was him? Was it Lance Mountain? Lance. Yeah. Yep. Well, and Lance had to be his hype man because Lance was trying to help him just yeah. to look comfortable, and he was so resistant that it made it nearly impossible. That's too bad for Lance because that's a tough job. You're telling an established kind of actor coming off a good movie that, we got so lucky in that we were skating with mm-hmm. you. You already knew how to skate, obviously. And then uh, we did, um, when we did Gleaming the Cube, Gleaming we the had cube. to teach Christian Slater how to oh, skate. Yeah, and Christian he Slater. was down to learn how to skate. Since then, I can tell you that Greetings that's and not salutations. the case <laughs> with most actors. Yeah. Nor do they even want to pretend. I was jealous of Gleaming the Cube. Did you see that one? Oh, what one? Gleaming the Cube. Oh, yeah. Did you drift off for a minute there? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I saw you looking at you. Maybe about to ask something. Yeah, I was, but okay. now you made me forget. Oh shit! That was, that was <laughs> you were cool thinking though. of icebergs in Sydney. I don't. Oh my <laughs> god, icebergs! <laughs> icebergs is a restaurant. That was my. First, I know that, that before my first you do. Encounter with paparazzi in Australia. Oh, you went down icebergs. Icebergs, yeah. I don't even know what you guys are talking. That's about. A, That's restaurant. a restaurant in Bondi. 
cool, you guys should go back there. Like, <laughs> I know, I, I knew that saying. would be a real hot button issue with you. I was saying you don't know it probably because you haven't been there, but I was there when I went down to visit and I got to ask, oh, you know what? I got to do two fun things in Australia. You don't care, and I'm not saying you do. Obviously. You care. <laughs> I care. I got to go to the Moulin Rouge premiere because Joe Dirt was premiering two days later, and that's why I was there. So we all got invited to that. Awesome. And uh, didn't like it. It wasn't for me, but everyone, and Brandy loved it, Brittany uh, Daniel from the movie loved it. All the girls loved it. Everyone loves that movie. So that was fun to just go to that premiere. And then we went to Ice Bags because we ran into Heath Ledger and Naomi Watts. Wow. And they said, that. and Baz Luhrmann. And they said, go to Icebergs. This was their big secret of Australia to give me. And I mean, that's the most, it's like saying go to a mall. <laughs> so we went to that, but I was excited they gave me any tips because I ran into it because Heath Ledger was a big star. So was Naomi, Stunner. Both were friendly. They were sitting behind me at a concert and uh, they told me that. And then I was like, I think I was fake asking him like for something to talk about, you know? <laughs> How was uh, Joe Dirt received in Australia? It was actually pretty good down there. It, it, it it's, did. It's very Americanized. You humor. know, it's, when I look back, there's a lot of Joe Dirt types down there. I think they sort of jived with that whole vibe of underdog guy picked on by tough guys, and he's just rednecks to- are bogans, and bogans are, are, are. There's a lot of bogans. Bogans are fish, right? No. Okay. I just I told know. you what a bogan is. Rednecks so, are bogans. Yeah, yeah. That's, I know what, what that's their term. Oh, redneck is redneck. the same thing as yeah. a bogan. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we love dudes that have mullets and want to do burnouts. Joe Bogan don't have. Doesn't matter what country you're from. Yeah. <laughs> they should have changed it like they do in Japan. <laughs> like they did with the burg with with Burger King. It's called Hungry Jacks. Hungry Jacks. Yeah. And that's Burger King. Yeah. yeah. The you get a the Whopper same. and everything. Yeah. But Ooh, look who remembered something about Australia. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so confused. <laughs> Should I be? I, good? Gotta, I do have to thank. I mean, thank you. Um, of course. In hindsight, but you you literally dressed up as Joe Dirt to do a cameo. Oh, that's right. For our Birdhouse video with Clint Walker because that was that is his favorite movie of all time. He's from Oklahoma. I don't think I've that done matters. that since. Yeah. What's that? I don't think I've been. Paraded around like a rodeo clown since. <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't. I like that guy, and he's a great skater. And it was you, and I thought I, it was still back when I could probably squeeze into it all. And I had, I think I still have it, but yeah, that was super fun. You had the mullet. You yeah, had, you, you said you had it from the movie. Yeah, which was even more exciting to Clint. But we just renegade. We were doing it like somewhere near Hollywood Boulevard. We had it no, was um, lo-fi. I'll it was say lo-fi. That. Yes. Yeah. Um, but I just craft I service wasn't it. even this. It was like, oh no way! Here's uh, five triscuits and a slim jim. Yeah, <laughs> here's that's not here's anyway. the tiger's milk bar until we get in trouble. <laughs> yeah, until we get we're gonna shoot until we get kicked out. Yeah, that was pretty much it. But uh, that was that was really cool of you. How so are you doing you. this without notes? I have notes when you. I have no. I can't think of anything to ask people. Um, I think just because we're fans because you, you know, know we're more, together. Yeah. So I was hoping to coast on on that. It comes from our soul. Mm-hmm. And obviously, yeah. you're uh, an entertaining guy, so yeah. it's like press play, right? Yeah. yeah. I try to fill the gaps because when I'm on my show and people don't talk, I look at Dana. I'm like, I do now. It's been 22 minutes. I'm done. I'm out of gas. <laughs> you and, I think you and Dana can fill the void. I, we, we actually easily. do too much, to be honest. I did. I did notice that when I was on it's the show. It's fun though. We it we, is, we it's... usually talk. We we get we come out a little hot, and so we start fucking around because. When I do an interview, I don't want to talk that much. I'm like, if you guys talk the whole time uh, and this counts as an interview, I'd be happy. And you just interject every once yeah. in a while. Yeah, that works. But with Dana, you know, we did a like, uh, we do some of the music acts from SNL and we did uh, David Byrne. And he was very pleasant, very sweet and up for doing it, which was a favor, you know, just nice to talk to a guy. We don't have any connection with him other than we like his stuff. And uh, Dana loves music, knows about the mechanics of music. I just like music. Mm hmm. And he was super pleasant, but he didn't have long answers. Like he doesn't. I wouldn't elaborate. imagine him having long answers. And and we don't know enough. You know, we had, we do tons of research about everyone, especially someone we don't know. So we we had enough to go. And what about this? And then we just jump around. But we went through everything we could. But a sweetheart, you know. And that just being and people go, oh, you're not that good of an interviewer. Then I'm like, well, I'm not really trying to get people to cry. Or it's not 60 minutes. I don't yeah. want to make people feel bad. Important announcement. We need to tell you all about MoneyGram. We live in a world that's more digital than ever with nearly every want or need 
just a tap away, bro. So many of our favorite digital services seamlessly meet the physical world when they're delivered to your front door, but until now, that has not been true for crypto. Digital currencies have been tied up online with no easy way to bring them into the real world. That's why we're so excited to share with you that you can now cash in and out of select digital wallets at participating MoneyGram locations without a bank, credit card, or a debit card. Debit card. That's the worst movie. That was exactly trailer. what you sound like. <laughs> hey, hey, it's no. Tony Hawk. Debit card. <laughs> Debit Flex card. your finances using the only digital wallets with real cash access activated by MoneyGram. Learn more at MoneyGram.com slash Stellar Wallets. You don't have to choose between better hair growth and your health. There's a holistic solution for men that promotes both healthier hair and whole body wellness. Get ahead of thinning hair with Nutrafol's whole body approach to hair growth. No drugs, no compromises. Nutrafol is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement clinically shown to improve your hair growth thickness and visible scalp coverage. Nutrafol's hair growth. Nutraceuticals go beyond genetics to multi-target the root cause of thinning, including stress, hormones, nutrition, <laughs> aging, and lifestyle through whole body health. Physician formulated using natural medical grade ingredients, Nutrafol's drug-free patented technology provides consistent, reliable results without compromising your sexual health. In a clinical study, men showed progressive improvement in hair growth and thickness after three and six months. Nutrafol is also trusted and recommended by more than 3,000 top doctors, man. You can grow thicker, healthier hair and support our show by going to Nutrafol.com and entering the promo code HawkWolf. HawkWolf! To save $10 off your first month's subscription, the offer is available to U.S. customers for a limited time. Plus free shipping on every order. Get $10 off at Nutrafol.com, spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com, promo code HawkWolf! HawkWolf. You have a... Have you ever cried in an interview? Um, I think I did one time because someone close to me just died, and then, of course, they asked me about it immediately. Did you, because I did it rec not like maybe two years ago, three years ago. I was on Dr. Drew's podcast, and I just got let go from Sirius, oh, and no. he had me on to talk about how I feel about oh, no. no longer having a job. <laughs> All right. I mean, that's not exactly. At least, at least he wasn't. At least it wasn't a bait and switch. Well, you knew I, what you're getting into. Yeah, I knew what I was getting into. But at one point, I got emotional and started to cry, and I could see one of the cameras that was on me zoom in I on my in. face, <laughs> and I was so pissed. Like I was like, "Oh, okay. Now it will be a good. Yeah, be good. Get close up of how <laughs> depressed I am." That's a tough one. Yeah. Yeah. And Dr. Drew, you're already like halfway to crying because you're like, he's going to figure something out. He's, the way he's looking at me is like, mm. I love it. He, he's got he, my number. Something's wrong. He reaches yeah. out to me off camera. So it, that's the other reason why I didn't mind it because Mostly kick is, flip talk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we didn't go there very much. He can't ollie and he's still working on it. I, I, by the way, I got I lost it at Ollie's and shit. I I couldn't catch on. I, I remember. Did you do bonus ones? You guys were trying to tell me, or at least I had Lance. I have a photo of Lance or somebody trying to teach me how to just do some basic. And, and you must one, have done boneless ones. I mean, I feel like that was. You yeah, if you're that, doing air axis, what's that? Spot, but when you take your front foot off and jump. Oh, and you're trying to just get air without. Yeah, but you you do you just you, leap with one foot. foot. Yeah, uh, that was. You push up, then you put your back foot or your front foot forward. So yeah. You pop it up and sort of even it up so it lifts. Uh, so you're just well that, getting air. That's an ollie or no comply. But I'm talking about like grabbing the board, taking one foot off, putting on the on the ground, and then jumping up. That's oh. a bonus one. I guess. Oh you yeah, I guess I could do that. But if you're doing air to axles, well, maybe I was. It was a, it was a bit era. advanced because uh, I couldn't even do a uh, straight arm. Inver an invert. Hand plant. Inver, yeah. But I mean, that's that's an advanced trick. But hey, what would come first? A lot of vert skaters these days can't do it either. Yeah. They don't it's do not, it. It's like, not like it's almost like a lost art. Did David Spade get airborne? No, that was where it was a little tricky. Staying on the I could do little aerials. They were it's harder if you're below coping. It's actually harder because you have to pull off. Early grab. But if you if you pop out, it's just so fucking terrifying. Right. <laughs> yeah. But it's easier because it's sort of it just comes she, up to your hand. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I don't know. Anyway, I wasn't that good. So my mom told me. And so I just I went into other fields. 
Wait, your mom told you you weren't that good? Well, because on that aerial access doll, I fell backwards into the ball and I broke both wrists. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, that that doesn't mean you're bad at it. Did well, you, you got to try, you, yeah. Did you continue skating after that, though, or was it just cold Yes, turkey? when it healed, I broke it again. I broke one of the wrists again. And skating? That's, that's what my mom said, yeah. She said, oh, wow. You're not that good. That's heavy. Yeah, if you kind of suck and you break stuff and then you break stuff, <laughs> it's pretty legit to quit. You, I thought I was too legit to quit, but I was not. Hold on. <laughs> this thing's falling apart. I like these are wound so motherfucking tight. Look at this. <laughs> I had, Jeez, a friend, relax. I had a friend. You, you're, you, you probably have a lot more experience with microphones than we do. I don't, but I just know that this is like fucking serious shit. Like <laughs> you can give it a goddamn quarter inch of play in case something goes wrong, but you can still hear me, right? Yes. I'm going to go well, next I, is can. up here and sure. then I go out of frame. All right, tell you us about You should just stand up on the chair. No, I, my cool. fucking back hurts because uh, I'm in Santa Monica. Go ahead. Because Santa Monica? Mm. Oh, because of driving here? It's the, and the weather, yeah. You know, we, I drove here from San Diego, David. You're not getting any sympathy from me. No, you drove, you came to my house, which was fun. And the rain, From probably. San Diego, too. Yep. Jesus Christ. But I saw a picture of you at Universal or something. It didn't feel as bad. <laughs> <laughs> You're fucking scampering around. He makes the most of it, yeah. He comes up here. It's a different day. When hanging out with Shazam or something. Yeah. <laughs> he usually has sushi with Shazam. Shazam. <laughs> <laughs> you were fucking clicking your heels. I wasn't worried about you. <laughs> I saw your 38 stories on Instagram. I go, oh, he's okay. Yeah. He's doing all right. No, he, I, he made a time, weekend out of it. Next time we do something together, I'm just going to have uh, stories of me driving home sad in traffic. Yeah, that's better. That's just what I'll to, be doing after this. In. Yeah, just, mm, we're the, to, oh, stop and go once You're again. No. You like it, though, don't you? Do you ever get mad at traffic? Because I feel like you um, one of the only people. It's just a fact people. of life. What yeah. can I do? Like, I have road rage to the fucking maximus. Oh, no. Yeah. You won't get out of the car, though, right? Mm, rather not get beaten up, but... <laughs> But you will, I'll like, start really shit. go. Yeah. I'll start and not finish, yeah. Are you one of those people that if someone's going fast, you try and block them from getting past you? I'm not that psycho, but it's usually if I'm done wrong first. You'll be mean to them if you've done wrong first. I'll be really mean to them. I'll make faces. Yeah. Uh, it really goes back to Rambo. Rambo, they drew first blood. If they start shit... Then I get angry, but I'm very easygoing. You're saying you learned from the movie Rambo, First Blood, that from now on, if anybody cuts you off or does anything You're on justified. the streets. I think that's what I got from that movie. Right. <laughs> I never got that. For you. I didn't know until halfway through it wasn't Rocky. <laughs> right. I was like, why is Rocky in the freezing cold? Is he going to fight anyone? Oh, I, yeah. I don't know. Go yeah. Ahead. I felt like he had range. Is that a teardrop on your cheek? Because if it is, I'm getting nervous. Yeah, I killed like five people. I, I just got out of prison for the show. If it's a are... love heart. Oh. Mm. It's because I love everybody. It's actually not. I got a, I was married to this girl, and I was, it wasn't going well. So I put an A for her name with a heart around it to like stop girls from hitting on me. Because I'm pretty sexy. A lot of girls try to hit on me. Yep. I got an accent and stuff. You it know, works. I see. I know this you whole think I'm work. hideous, but some chicks dig it. <laughs> no, I do. Yeah. <laughs> no, I but, don't. But uh, it didn't work. People, girls still wanted it. <laughs> but say, they'd it say, "What's that on your face?" Way. And I'd be like, "That's it, my wife's name." And they'd be like, "What are you doing tonight?" Yeah, it was more of a challenge. Oh, they like that. Yeah. 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 But then I left her. Yeah. Uh, and then I just turned it into a black heart. But I wrote a song about it because I, I, I changed. When people would ask me what the A is, I would say it's for anal. Hmm. So I just love anal. All right, let's look at a clip. <laughs> you can play the music video. A is for anal. It's a, if anybody wants to. Death, death, my there band. Death, death, oh, yeah, there's a clip. Oh, no, there is a clip. Made a, yeah, there's, a, there's a music video about the song A is for anal. <laughs> I thought it was one of your tears from your Dr. Drew interview and you had it immortalized. <laughs> it was, well, there's plenty more just, where that came from. It just from. dried right there and you Jeez. outlined it. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, go ahead, next question. I want to hear about the the last, last next Netflix movie you did. The wrong, oh, Wrong Missy. Wrong Missy. Yeah, I watch that. I like you it. You like Wrong Missy, right? Yeah. Nothing That's to good. hate there. You don't even have to like me. She was funny. In it. I don't hate you in anything, I yeah, don't think. Thank you. Yeah. She, that, that movie came up. Uh, I did a movie called Father of the Year. It was a lower Went to the premiere oh, with did? my son. Oh, fun, dude. That was fun. Did you go to the Joder premiere? No. Because uh, a funny thing happened, that boring story. I, uh, Heather, we'll get this. 
when you do a premiere and you're in the movie, they go, okay, who do you want to come? Like, okay, the cast to just shoot me, make sure you give it to all these people. The obvious people in your life, family, everybody, whatever, you know, you just want everyone, you throw a blanket out there and you hope somebody yeah. shows it. So I get to the premiere and it's pretty crickets. And I go, and they go, none of the invites went out. None. They didn't go out. And I go, nobody knows, no one knows about this. And all I had was Kid Rock was in the movie. He came to pick me up. We picked up Eminem. <laughs> and then Sean Penn came with his kid because I just ran into him and said, if you want to come. So it was only, it was like a skeleton crew, the premiere. And, and then they just f- filled the seats? Some or- figured it out. There was some, some crowd that they just like hired, you know, like they fill it with uh, fans yeah. and shit. But everyone was like, "What? when's your fucking premiere? I go, it was, we missed it. It was wow. over. And, my cast didn't know, and they were, so it was all weird. So there was a huge screw up. But that, that was where I thought maybe you were the ones that was a seat filler that day. But um, <laughs> then. No, no, I was on the, definitely on the invite. No, list. I would have. I would have said. receive an invite. That Tony, you got kids. Sure. Get up. And yes. uh, wrong, wrong Missy just wound up being one of those funny ones where R rated comedy, they don't come along as much from the old school ones you probably liked. You probably liked growing up, you know, the ones, oh, yeah. I don't know, your age. But every couple of years, there's a funny one. There's Anchorman, there's Step Brothers, there's yeah. those kinds, there's Animal House, there's... Blues. What was the most fun movie you worked on? God damn. I mean, I mean besides Police Academy 4, I obviously. Mean, Police Academy 4 was super fun because I was new. Yep. And I found Canada had, not Vicodin, but they had codeine. <laughs> Aspirin has codeine in it at the store. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. So I took two at a, at a rap party. I was tired and had a headache. I took two, which I would never take now. And I was like, I feel a little better. Actually, I have a little energy. Actually, I'm going to dig a pool on the roof. And then I just started going, I was John Bonet. I ran home. I ran home from the party. It was probably three miles. I didn't know I, didn't know I took That's anything. That's you remember. So I just go, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling great. And then I go, and I, I go I'm going to have a drink because I'm getting, I'm too wired. And then I, yeah. it would have been better if I knew it. But they said, oh, 222s have codeine. Which is like I'd never taken a pain pill. In my life. I didn't know. Gacked me out to the maximum. So <laughs> I love that about that movie. One day, uh, and then <laughs> it rained a lot though. And then um, I did love Missy. We we're in Hawaii, and I knew shooting it. Lauren was very funny, and I go. And Swartzen was there, and Sandler stopped by, and uh, John Farley was in. It was just fun crew. And the funny thing about Hawaii movie is we're from Portland in the movie, and so. We're on a vacation, so we're not supposed to be tan. So when you're off, they don't let you get tan. And so you can't even go to the pool. <laughs> even if I play golf, though, I put it on sunscreen where I had I'm like, God damn. And Swartz is like, what? <laughs> he doesn't understand anything. He's a fucking moron. <laughs> I love that guy. <laughs> so I have to explain it every it. day to him over and over. So today we can't? No, Nick. <laughs> never. Not any never, day. Never once. <laughs> the answer is still oh, no. Man. Uh, that's fucking bullshit. I go. It's not even the, it's just, so showbiz, welcome to show. <laughs> so anyway, Tommy Boy, obviously the ones with Farley, Black Sheep, a lot of fun just because uh, early days of low pressure, do whatever you want, make up when, jokes. When you guys were doing Tommy Boy, was a lot of that off the cuff? You know, there was some that was written and uh, there was some where we'd go, are you, can we, uh, Pete, the director was pretty cool. Fred Wolf was writing on it. And it was just like us going, Back on a little code is something he did at work. And so we thought, let's just throw it in here. Because some scenes were just flat. The movie's about fucking selling brake pads. So it wasn't that exciting sometimes, you know? But we, it's consistently funny. I mean, it's, it's that, just but every, at it's every It's good turn. if you have all these SNL people because if you read a scene for the next day and you go, oh, this is just us meeting people about brake pads. And it just feels flat. Like there's not, it, it's story you have to have. And they might have a joke or two, but you go, I bet we could find more. And mm-hmm. so let's find a clip on tie. Let's find just anything to play into either his physicality or me saying something under my breath to him or some goofiness. And then someone's in there. We're getting in a fight and, you know, where I hit them with a board. That stuff, all you know ahead of time, hopefully that works, you know. And then some things work where you don't expect it, you know. Housekeeping was added. There's a lot of things. Whacking off of the window was added you know, spanky, you know, all that <laughs> yeah. shit. And we don't know if it's funny. It's just us shooting with a quiet crew like this, and then you go, okay. <laughs> and we go, that was kind of funny, right? And they're like, 
I don't know. And then we <laughs> like we like it. Will everybody, you know? And so as time goes on, jokes from those movies, there's more that resonate over time than the obvious ones. The deer waking up in the backseat was the most expensive, and they animatronic deer and smashing. It was All probably pre-planned. 15 degrees, and we're like freezing and watching it and trying to think of jokes and watch it, watch here, it smashes this, watch here, watch it. And that is the highest testing bit in the movie, set piece. And then when you look back in the movie, that's not the first five people say. No. You know no. what I mean? You look and you go, oh yeah, the deer was funny. But that was the one they had all their chips on. So they spent a lot of money on it. And then you look back and you go, it's funny because you watch a movie over and over. You you decide what's funny. And you go, I just like those throwaway lines right there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. where's Moron? Moron's here. Okay, go here. And then you go. And that's just while we're doing takes. I mean, just the, just the Darth Vader thing. Oh yeah, see? He's in the fan. <laughs> yeah. That was in the script. Now, that was in the script, but that, you don't even know if that'll be funny. Right. Rob Lowe's shirt sucking off. Yeah. I said, that's never going to work. I can't imagine. They're going to uh, uh, pull it up. Yeah. And they go, they built this thing. So I wasn't in that scene. So when I watched the dailies or a rough cut, I go, that's so fucking funny. That's right. unbelievable. Yeah. There's no way they did that. And it's not a CGI. It's like, shoo. And he goes. It's awesome. And he just gets up, <laughs> walks away. And even in. In, in Black Sheep, I didn't really get along with the director, and, and she will freely tell you because she doesn't like me, but she just wanted to really do a movie with Farley, but uh, unfortunately, I was baggage. <laughs> um, I came with it. And she, but I will tell that she said, when you're, we can't find an ending to when you guys are in the bunk beds talking, and we just wanted a good out. And so she goes, I had the bunk beds collapse on each other. And we didn't even get what she meant. We go, they fall? Did you have a stuntman? You went back and shot it? No, they did this trick. And I saw it, and again, I went, fuck, that's funny. Fuck, that's good. Like, it looks like it's 100% us. So we just had to loop in, like, <laughs> you know, like, he's eating, and he's, I don't even remember, but he's, and then he just, they fall on each other. and. Uh, but showed you after the fact, after it's been shot. Yeah, because we didn't end it that way. And mm-hmm. we were like, that scene ended kind of flat. We didn't have enough, you know, we'll, we'll ad lib. We'll do a take, and then they'll go, ah, it felt flat. What if Farley says this? You know, why don't you roll over on me? Or why don't, you know, we just try different things, and we do it because we have 10, 15 takes. Just do, and you don't know what's going to wind up in there. I didn't have editing. Uh, I wasn't privy to that. So some movies, you but know. you gave him multiple options. Yeah, and, and then you like- cross your fucking fingers and go, is the editor good? And Bill Kerr was the editor, and he was good. Yeah. He showed me a rough cut of a, uh, me going in the gas station, and then Farley's got the door open. He's getting—I don't know what he's doing out there. And they, sh- and I'm in it, so I can't see the cameras over me. They go, Farley's behind you, so stay in this area. And then we're going to see him, and he's going to act like a fucking buffoon behind you. And he's like, oh, you know, and he's doing that, and I'm just staring at the guy, and just me calm, and he's crazy. And then the guy, and then and then he, and so about three days later, he goes, "Come by editing on your day off," and he goes, "Remember that one in the gas station? Check this out." And he shows me, and I go. That's so fun. And you put the song Crazy in there? He goes, that's just for now. I don't know. They kept it in. It's just faded in the background. You see her crazy. It's all, it's all boring. <laughs> and I'm like, well, and then I'm doing jokes with him. Then you have another level behind us. And then when Farley <laughs> bends the door, and then he closes it. And the door weighed about 50 fucking pounds. So <laughs> when I did the take where I have to open it, sometimes it would jam. Sometimes it wouldn't. And it, it missed my foot by one inch. And I go, that would have killed me because it would have broken every bone. So I have to pull it and kind of step away without, wow, you know, letting you know that it's the joke is coming. And uh, and when I saw that, I go, God, he was funny behind me. I didn't even know, you know. I go, what are you doing back there? He goes, acting like a jackass. <laughs> and I go, did you do good? He goes, yeah. <laughs> he goes, I know how to do that. He did know. Yeah, he did I know. can make your face really big. Arr! Do you like doing movies now? I like it. It's harder. I mean, it's more just the the idea of a. Uh, you don't get as many swings. You want them to be good. I'm looking at one now for this. Why summer. don't you get as many swings? You know, it's a young man's game. It's more diverse out there. It's just, you know, the comedies are tougher to f- do an R-rated comedy because all the jokes are offensive. offensive. I mean, it's just tougher. So, plus I do other stuff. And, and you know, movies are hard. So, even The Wrong Missy was hard. I mean, still, I don't care what if you're in Hawaii, you get up at five. Yeah. You have no life. You're just sitting in a chair like that for... 16 hours, just memorize lines, do them, memorize, do them. 
go to bed, memorize the next day on the way home, wake up, put them outside the shower. Not the Hawaii up. experience you imagine growing up. You don't even think of the yeah. But do you no. think to yourself that you're in the middle of doing something that can... I don't know. I do love the showbiz, and I get lucky to be in a movie. So if I pick it, I want it to be good. So every day I'm trying to add stuff and just make it funny and and do whatever I can because it means a lot. Like Father of the Year wound up being number one on Netflix before they would show the numbers at the bottom. It wasn't that long ago, six years ago or something. They wouldn't show. So it came out, I didn't even know. They go, Father of the Year is next weekend. I go, and we did a premiere and I go, oh, okay. And it's, I go, it's not in a movie theater. I don't know what the fuck's, you know, I would know if it was in variety. You're just, number you're one, just, number two, you're just number three. Forward. But if I came out with a movie that was number one like that, that would be a game changer. But on Netflix, we didn't know. So they just called me and said, it's number one this week. I go, oh, fuck, number one? They go, yeah, worldwide, it's number one. I go, what the fuck? And then, and then they go, we got to get you another one. So we did the wrong Missy. And I would have done another one right away, but it was COVID, so we're just waiting. But that one was number one for a long time. And then we knew it. And then everyone started figured it out because it showed. So people are sending me Instagram DMs of, I'm in Italy, it's number one. I'm in Norway, it's number one. I'm <laughs> like, cool. holy shit, really? And then Ted from... Uh, from Netflix says, dude, you're number one in like three days. Now it's worldwide. It was America, then worldwide. Then he goes, it's still, it's still. Scott Stuber, they're like, it's still number one. And then my celebration was like Tito's and eating Top Ramen because I was at home. We were in lockdown. So there's no <laughs> excitement of going out and going, yeah, da, 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 <laughs> yeah. for I'm the jolly. Why don't they do that? Oh, yeah, call it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, my bad. Did that make it to a... Your house. I was here. You, Dude. you mother. Absolute. What about the? Um, you get exempt. I'm gonna get this wrong, but the the Comedy Central Comedy Network mm -hmm. was the show that. You, there was one Lights Out. Lights there, Out. There was a Showbiz show first, and years later I did Lights Out. I remember uh, my wife and I saw you somewhere, and we were talking about Hollywood Minute. Yeah. And you said, "Oh, I'm kind of, I'm working on something that's gonna look like that as a TV show." Yeah. And then. I think that became Lights Out, no? Lights Out was, yeah, Lights Out was about, it started sort of Instagram and all the jokes about social media and maybe doing a show about that, what's hot and so, you know, like what's on, what's yeah, trending, I, I, what's viral. I thought it was really good. And then we turned it into like topics of what's going on. Then we had three comics every day. It was a hard show to do, but it was fun because you get up at nine a.m. Yeah, that's right. It was, it was every weekday, right? It was every day. And so you, you get up. <laughs> so wild. I get up I early, imagine. I go in. Set my fantasy lineup. Then I go in and uh, walk around and get ready because once I'm in, it's questions. And here you walk into a room that's already set and everyone's already brainstormed for an hour. And they go, I literally sit down and they go, first subject, blah, blah. Do you want this one or not? Here's the possible jokes. Yes. Here's the next one. Come back to that. Here, do that one, that one, that one, that one. And we'll go with those subjects. Go. And then they go off and write jokes about that. Wow. Everybody. And then I go in my room, read monologue jokes, circle, circle, tweak, tweak. Whittle it down, circle, circle, tweak, tweak, whittle it down. So you, you finally did your talk show. Go to a pre-tape. <laughs> and and it's so you, hard, yeah. The talk show you declined so long ago. Yeah. Came and full it was, circle. It was harder, yeah. But do, not doing uh, Joan Rivers or, or standing in for, it could have gone wrong. And if I did, I would erase yeah, all my heat. And that would have set the pace for... If I did badly, they would go, okay, he's, he sucks, who else? And there was almost no way. They did bring a few comics that were established to do it. And they were like... I, I ask you the qu but the cue cards are over there. You know, they don't know they're like a deer in headlights and people are like next. Yeah. So That's how we feel doing our show. I yeah. would have gotten thrown to the wolves. No, you guys seem to know what you're doing. Oh, thank you. So I uh David Spade's here, ladies and gentlemen. He's the guest on the show. You could probably go to DavidSpade.com. You should put that up to the Check at out the all front. these tour dates. <laughs> Just trying to sound like for this uh, for this hour, people are going. What's the plug? What's the plug it? here? Oh, I don't know. I guess just uh the uh, fly on the wall podcast and then um it's my special still on Netflix, I guess. Oh, and I do a tour. DavidSpade.com. <laughs> hey, I knew it. Check out my garbage act. <laughs> no, it's funny. <laughs> no, it is good. Just, when is this on? Then I can say what dates are coming up. Yeah. This comes uh, on in uh, 2024? That depends on how, on, on how good you are. Oh, is it? Oh, really? We've already done it. So you were pretty good. I think it's going to go out soon. It's going to go out soon? Yeah. Oh, Next it is? Week. Oh, good. That's the way to do it. Yeah. We hold ours. There you go. We do. We, well, like, we are holding others. Oh, you are? You're going to yes. shove my ass out there? Yeah. yeah you're, you're Why? Why, the why do you need to spike your rating? you out of our ass now. The red rope came apart. Just like, yep. <laughs> Get yeah. Everyone right. else, hold on. Get me in there before you bring yep. out uh, you know, yeah. Steve Caballero. 
<laughs> anyway, no. Nah, okay. he went. He was before you. Sorry. Cabler, I had questions about other skaters. So Go ahead. Soy had extensions, which is blowing my fucking mind. Yeah, the the he has the, long. The is legend it, is, he is Japanese. That him, the yeah, legend was, is, that, is that it cost him a thousand dollars, and it took how like ballsy eight hours. for it you to so good. back then to put clip-ons in or something? Yeah. No, they were. No, they were. Yeah. Like, Actually connected Worse. to his hair follicles. And That's he, committing. Yeah, it looked so good when he was doing it. Well, he had so long hair anyway. Back. Yeah, but this was extra long. It was like <laughs> yeah. touching his butt. So when he did a big method air, it was like wee hoo hair. So I was on my way to that until I had to double you, but it's okay. Oh, I fucked you, Royal. <laughs> Chris Miller, he kind of had the same hairstyle anyway, right? He did. Yeah, he actually. I always looked, forget he actually, to mention. He looked more like you. Yeah. Too. Yeah. I don't mention yeah. him as much because you're super famous, but Chris Miller did a great job, and it was really. And I, I love skating with these guys. Picture being a guy from Arizona and all my buddies reading Skateboarder, Surfer Magazine, the biggest fake fucking surfers, <laughs> town and country shirts every day, kryptonite, doing all that shit. And then I actually- <laughs> These action sports faces. One I of was the best. a fucking hand plant. <laughs> yeah. Turtle man. Kryptonics. Krypton. Yeah. Ty Law. Who's the one that would do like a board slide when you, is that guy Ty somebody? Ty slide. Oh, Yeah. That's true. He would go really fast and he'd go, Hur. I could do those. Yeah. Oh, what's his name? You oh, go forward idiot. I can't remember. and then you sw- and you just do a Pal slide. slide. Ty Page. Yeah. Right? Ty Page, is it? Yeah. He also, I think, got into handstands or something, didn't he? But he would do like a Bertelman lip slide and that was the tie slide. Yeah, that's cool. Yes. No, I could wait. do Bertelmans. Dude, he'd... Yeah. Stay close, dude. Yeah. No. <laughs> I'm not some fucking I'm rookie. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I'm aware. And then I remember, Tony, I came by your place one time and we did that little... I, I flipped my board up and then kicked it up and caught it. Yeah. Put it on my fucking TikTok or something. Anyway, it was a big hit. What was it on, Heather? Instagram. <laughs> yeah. Oh, everyone was clamoring. <laughs> I was really that. fucking Alex Earl for a day. Do you remember we did the we did that prank show at Skate Lab? Yeah. Oh, Kinda. that's right. You oh that prank show. And what did we do? And we we pranked some, I can't oh. remember, but something was supposed to explode and it didn't. Oh, that was fameless. That's right. And it didn't explode. And so the guy who was being pranked. Realized that something was Wrong, not happening yeah. that was supposed to happen. So they like, oh, we got to take two. Act like you've never seen this before. <laughs> oh, and then we try to prank him again. <laughs> yeah, on the, prank him again. You know, and it blew up that time. That was a prank show that I did and I produced. And then I, I realized that I didn't like being part of the pranks afterwards. Because I now I hate them on Instagram when everyone's like walks in a department store and like blows in some guy's ear, kicks him, and then looks around. I go, I would beat the fuck out of that guy. That's where it would come in. I, w- I like when they get caught and beat up because yeah I would do that yeah because they try to fucking make you look the whole thing of pranks is you look dumb I look cool <laughs> and, then, and then I make money off it yeah and then they go sign this waiver I'm like nah I decided instead of signing the waiver that I'm gonna punch everybody <laughs> involved involved. Involved. in the face like the the poo dollar jackass thing like you realize when that guy picks up the poo dollar and then they all go ah you got poo in your hands. Then another dude goes over there and goes, hey, man, like, we're going to put you in the movie, so you're just going to yeah. sign this thing. Like, I was, I've i already assaulted three people yeah. before this guy's coming over to sign a weight. Like, I You've already worked your way to catering is it? beating Chris, everyone Chris up Rock, on Rock, when Punked was on, he was like, they don't punk rappers. It's like, you got punked, you got stabbed. <laughs> you got stabbed. <laughs> yeah. That's fair. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, and Chris Rock's special was very funny the other night. Oh, out. and we saw you. I, I saw your um, what we what do you call that after show prologue, something like that. Yeah, I pray. Yeah, that was Chris's idea. He said, Let's he didn't want to make a bigger deal. Did you see that, you know, Chris Rock did the they live do a special, special and then they go on to we kind of I saw the special, and then, and then afterwards, he and Dana hosted a panel and we just talked about it. It was funny, so Wait, it was did funny. It, does, I don't know if you had to stay because it started the credits, then it went in so. You probably just thought it was over. Just, yeah. But it was no big deal. It just they never done that. So live event, they wanted to do something different. But it was Kareem Abdul Jabbar and uh Arsenio. Jamie Shmove. And Yvonne. Yvonne uh, was the orgy, was another uh, female comic. And she, it was great. I actually got along with everyone. We had fun. It was obviously, you know, race related, a lot of his bits. And so it's just the elephant there. I'm like, where are the white guys? So, you, know, I, you know, how much can we I think say? You guys can handle yourselves. We were. I know. We know. We. It was done because we knew Chris, and so we just keep it a mix. It was funny. Well, JB saw just Kareem. I thought funny. it was a pickup game. Yeah, I was like Chris. I go, oh, Chris is special. He went where no comics brave enough to go. Baltimore. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I just was doing jokes like that, you know, and then uh, and then they would. 
but it got kind of heavy about different subjects and things. So we just let everyone talk. We did it for about 25 minutes. It was fun. I, I, uh, I had just met Kareem a, a week before that. He was on a flight I was on coming back from Miami, I think. And uh, he know, Did he I know you? No, but the person he was with did. Oh. So she was like, oh, let's get a photo of you guys together. And, and um, I introduced myself. Oh, I bet but, it's that lady. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, she was. Yeah, she's, she's the, she's the yeah. Kareem photo wrangler. Yes, for sure. But he, but he didn't talk very much, so it was really cool to hear him talk on on your thing. Because yeah, because you know he had things he wanted to say, and he yeah. had, he had commented on these things before. And that's why they had him. They wanted him to talk about. No, it, it was great. I thought what he said was awesome. Yeah, he's a good kid, and uh, it was just good to meet Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Yeah, that's fair. That, when, yes. When do you see him in life? You know, you're not going to see him. airplane. Yeah, I think JV Smooth goes. You got the goggles? And he goes, <laughs> <laughs> I retired the goggles. <laughs> you know. That? Well, you saw airplane. airplane. Did it yeah, make yeah, it down yeah. there? I was more into. <laughs> I swear to God, you were young. I was more into when he kicked Bruce Lee. Oh yeah, uh, is that Enter the a Dragon fight with Bruce Lee? Yeah. What movie is it? Enter the Dragon? Nah, nah, because it was the levels. You had to go up different levels of the house, and when you got to the top, it was the ream. <laughs> and he's sitting in <laughs> so a seat, great. and when he goes over to him, the he ream. kicks him from like fourteen feet away, still <laughs> sitting down. Yeah, yeah. So awesome. He's got a big. Uh, uh, dirt footprint on the front of his chest oh, from the foot. Funny. It's like, there's no way it's actually, it's like, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like a foot that's I like, know, he's pretty big. Your microphone's loose. Mine is fucking locked in here with like, you want to w- switch? Welded. I, I think, uh, I think, no, you gotta go anyway. No, I'm leaving anyway. I got, he's got a hard I, out. I got 20 of these to do he's today. Got a hard out. I got, I got to go do Mike McGill's now. <laughs> <laughs> that's. I'm surprised you made it here. You know, no. one time I ran over to meet you guys at McGill's Ramp a long, long time ago. I think he's near Lucadia. I don't know where he is down there. Carlsbad. Area. Carlsbad. Yeah. yeah. So I, uh, but I, you know, I was used to that ski- that uh, cement skateboarding old man, and I was, I either had a board or you gave me one. Just dropping in was terrifying. There were huge ramps, but it was wood, and I was falling because I wasn't as compressed on front sides, and the board would drift on ramps, and I thought it was so much harder. Oh, it's slippery. It's slippery. Oh, right? yeah. That's that is rough. Max, my is that still like that? Or? Well, I, it, it, there are. Or do you put stuff on? There are varying surfaces, but they start to get worn in because everyone knee slides on them. They get plastic, and then they get slippery. Like the plastic oh, gets yeah, embedded yeah. in the grooves. So my ramp is now of that stage, and we're about to resurface it. But, yeah, yeah it's sketchy. I needed it's it hard. to be a little tacky. Me too. I, yes, because I don't even know where my board that. is. It just starts. I was like, oh my god, I'm starting to yeah, lose. It's going away from me. Yeah, and then I start to go down. Yeah. Not cool. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right, well, well. David, thank you. Uh, DavidSpade.com for all these tour dates. <laughs> yeah. Where am I going? I'm going to North Carolina in a week. And uh, we're giving Sandler a big award this weekend and uh, in the Ooh. Kennedy Center. And then I go to uh, next week is North Carolina. Finally, he's getting some accolades. Nashville. Uh. Oh, my God. It's just never ending. But the guy, at least he deserves it. My God, he's he's done it all. Hilarious. Yeah. And it's fun. It'll be fun. It'll be fun just to be screw around with everybody and yeah. uh, make fun of everybody. I wrote yeah. some stuff for him, so we'll see if, how that goes. Well, thanks for uh, thanks, guys. Yeah, thanks. thanks for we're friends, us. though, right? We're joking around. We had a good so, time. Yeah, we had fun. Fully. Okay, good. Okay, <laughs> we're peers. We're equals. I I learned a lot about you. Right, me too. So, I have a new yeah. newfound. I had I had respect, but it's up a little. I appreciate bit. that. Thank you. It's about. Time. Well, hey, I've always considered you an OG skater. And Thank you, buddy. I feel like you still keep those ethos. So. And you know, a lot of people can't wear plum, but you know what? It's pink. Oh, worse. Okay, um, you guys. Just give me like a 10 minutes to get down the freeway, and then you can take off. Okay. Thanks. Oh, to clear it out for you? Yeah, I get a little, right, I get a head start. Yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to be the subject of the rage. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Here's me on the way home. I kind of would be pumped on David Spade. Flip from, it out yeah, on yeah. me. I'd be like, <laughs> All right. Oh, we're gonna shit. try to piss you off out there. Yeah. Till you see my uh, gun that's like serial number, you know, sawed off of it. And they're like, oh, wait please a second. pull a gun on me, David Spade. <laughs> Please pull a gun, and I'll go, yeah, it goes bang. <laughs> All right, you go down. I tried to make it. All right, thanks, Dave. Bye, guys. Get me a coffee.